everyone, we are back again. So, your dough should have been resting in the fridge for two hours. What I want you to now do is prepare your butter. So, as I said before, your butter is going to sit in a thick layer in the middle of your bread dough. Then, over the next couple of hours, we are going to fold that layer of butter and dough and dough keep folding it to develop lots of nice layers of thin butter dispersed with our dough and that is called laminating so what we need to do is prepare our butter to do that i apologize for the mess of the kitchen when i'm going live it's always spick and span because i've been doing this in between normal day things bit of a mess so I apologise. So what you need to do is you need to put your butter in between two layers of baking paper. That is the best way to do it without getting in a sticky mess. But we need 300 grams of butter. Now one block like this is 250 grams. So I'm going to steal another 50 grams from this other block. And that's what we're going to do. So We've got our one block, which is 250 grams. Oops. Right there. And then we're gonna steal a slice or two from this one. Until we've got the correct amount of butter. Now don't worry if you end up with little chunks because I'm gonna show you how to spread them all out now. Just wanna make sure. We've got the right quantity to start with, so that can go back in the fridge. And we can pop our scales away as well. So, what we need to do is create a square of butter. Now, if you're using spreadable butter, like stalk or something like that, the easiest thing to do is weigh out your butter and then spread your butter in a nice square wrap it up and leave it to chill. You want a nice cold block of butter by the time you're finished. My butter is soft, but it is cold. So all I'm gonna do is chop it into slices and then lay the slices down on my piece of baking paper. Now I've just rolled out loads of baking paper, simply so that we, I know that we've got enough to cover it over because once I've sliced it up, we're gonna be molding it into a nice square shape between our pieces of baking paper. And it's gonna stop us from getting in too much of a sticky mess. So all you wanna do is just kind of square up all your butter so it's all really close together like this. It doesn't have to be perfectly layered, just as long as You've got it all in one place in a nice square, all tightly packed. See, mine is even a little bit spreadable, so I'm gonna kind of spread it, spread it out a little bit so that it's a bit more even. That little new block is a bit colder. Great, now, we're gonna cover it up. My scissors, chop this end off. And we can always save that for something else. Then we're gonna cover it up Cut off the baking paper, just like so, and then we're going to roll it out. And all you're looking for is a nice big rectangle that's as even as you can make it, because where the rolling pin really comes in handy. Now if your butter is really, really cold, like straight from the fridge, you might need to give it a bit of a back with your rolling pin. All you want to do is give it a bit of a whack with your rolling pin. Keep peeling and readjusting your baking paper if you need to. However, the majority of my butter is relatively soft, so I don't have to do too much with it. You just want to kind of roll it out every which way, as if you were rolling pastry or dough. Just like this. Be careful of your rolling technique. If you watch that video where the poor woman rolls some flour into her own face. <laughs> That'll brighten up your day if you haven't seen that yet. And you want to roll it relatively thin. It should end up being about two millimetres thick. 
So if you use that kind of as a guide, and roll it out until it's about two millimeters thick. Now, as you can see, mine is getting all quite uneven, but don't worry. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that once we've got it a little bit thinner. So keep rolling, it's all nice and even. And then see all these bits at the side that are all uneven? All we're gonna do is we're gonna peel back our baking paper, like so. We're gonna slice the edges off and we're gonna redistribute them through the rest of the butter, just like that kind of square it up. Put that one over there and the slice off that bit. Mine is quite soft in part, so I'm just gonna kind of spread it. Spread it and squidge it out until it's a nice, even, rectangular kind of shape. Just like that. That area is a bit thick. And now we roll again, just to ensure and it's a nice even thickness all the way along. And then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge to chill while we get our dough out and prepare our dough. So that looks about right. Now I'm gonna measure it for you so you can see the kind of size that you're looking for. So that's about, it's about 25 centimetres by 22 centimetres, but you know, try and get it in there. Try and get it as square as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, as long as it is even in thickness. So as long as the thickness of it is quite even, you don't have to worry as much about the general size of it. Right, now leave that covered in your baking paper. Fold over your edges of your baking paper if you like, and then pop that as a sheet into the fridge to cool down. Don't let it bend, just let it sit in the fridge to cool and you will see now and my lovely dough and how fabulous that looks check out my dough everyone i'm so pleased with that check it out i mean this is mostly because it's got twice as much yeast as usual but look at that and that's been in the fridge so bear in mind the fridge will not kill your yeast it just slows it down Can you imagine if i've left this out in a warm place this whole time well, it would have massively overproved, but... <laughs> right then, now, before I told you that you were not supposed to use flour on your surface. However, once your dough has proved, you can add some flour, because it's not gonna disrupt our dough. So I'm gonna put a bit of flour on the surface, and now what we need to do is roll out our dough so that it's big enough to completely enclose our butter. So have I still got my, my trusty my trusty ruler, yes I do. So our butter was 25 by about 22. So we want our dough to be twice as long as that. So about 50 centimetres long and about 30 centimetres wide. As always, make sure you flour your rolling pin because that is why your problems come in. It's always the rolling pin. Now let's get our dough out. Where's my trusty dough scraper? Here it is. Look how wonderful this dough is. This is so, so beautiful. All full of air. That's exactly what you want. See how I poke it and it doesn't completely deflate? Perfectly proved dough. Let's see if we can get it out of this bowl. Scraper is very handy for this. If you can get yourself a scraper, they're really inexpensive and they're very, very, very handy. Oh, fabulous dough. It's nice and moist, <laughs> which is always good with a dough. Right, we're gonna press it out. This is called knocking it back. And this just knocks all the air out of it so that we can shape it. Now, I'm gonna try and get it into a bit of a rectangle shape just kind of by kind of pressing it around. And that's gonna make it easier for me to roll out properly. So, let's go lengthwise first. We want it to come out a little bit. And then we're gonna go long ways down the counter. Keep rolling it out like that. Try and keep it as square as you can and let it roll down. Now you will have plenty of dough to encase your butter. So don't worry, it's just a case of rolling it out thin enough. See how well this rolls? And roll it out so that we can put our butter in there 
and wrap up our butter in dough. And that's literally all there is to it. Now, if you've made puff pastry before, you will recognise this step, whoops, very well, because this is exactly what we do with puff pastry, isn't it? We roll out our dough, then we put our butter in the middle and wrap our butter in dough. Exactly the same thing. Right now, I'm going to check on the size of it. Let's leave our butter in the freezer. Oh, in fact, I'm going to put my butter in the freezer. My butter was a bit warm, so I'm going to put my butter in the freezer so it has a really good chill before I have to use it. because this is where you have to remember that heat is your enemy with this recipe. Heat is going to melt your butter, which means that your butter is going to incorporate into the dough rather than sitting in separate layers. And if it does that, you're going to lose those lovely flaky layers that are iconic to a croissant. So let's measure it. So we want it about 50 centimetres in width. That's 30. Great, we've got 60 centimetres lengthwise and over 30 in width. Well, it's a perfect size, so all I want to do is give my butter a little bit of time to chill. So let's have a tidy round. It's so messy, I'm sorry. <laughs> my kitchen is normally so clean. But I've been very busy, I've been sunbathing. It's just so hard, somebody's got to do it. <sighs> so, give ourselves a tidy up. Our butter's chilling in the fridge. Our dough is rolled out. Now, if your dough had not grown as much as mine, you probably need to leave it a bit longer, but make sure you're leaving it in the fridge. So this dough is nice and cold, which means that it's not gonna melt our butter when we put our butter onto it. So bear that in mind. The other thing that you're gonna need is some kung film. And I'll explain that to you once we've done our first fold. I can tell you about our fold while our butter is having a chill. So, they call this step turning. It's a turn. I don't know why they call it turning because technically you're folding. But what we are going to do is we're going to put our butter in the middle of our dough, we're going to encase the butter in the dough, then we're going to roll it out and we're going to fold it. And we're going to fold it into three layers. Wrap it in cling film and it needs to go in the fridge for half an hour. You're going to do this four times. So what I suggest you do is get yourself a little timer and now, while we're waiting, put 30 minutes on your timer. Get 30 minutes on there. Don't press go yet, but just set it to 30 minutes. And then drop down somewhere. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to drop down on the recipe. So when you see the recipe, you'll all be wondering what on earth are those marks. I want you to draw four little marks on a piece of paper. Keep a note of it. That's what I've done. I've just drawn four marks and each turn I do, I'm going to cross one out. It's the best way to remember if you've done all your turns. So our first one we're going to do now together. Then I'm going to leave you to do the rest because you can just rewind the video and continue from this stage. So bear that in mind. I'm going to do one turn with you. Then you will need to do three more turns, chilling for 30 minutes between each turn. That's important. Make sure it keeps cool, especially if it's as hot a day as it is today. It needs to be cold. Right, let's check on our butter, see how it's doing. I know it's only had a couple of minutes, but I'm hoping. Oh, yeah, perfect. I don't want to freeze it, we just want it to be cold. Right, so now, oh, it's bent into a funny shape. What I want you to do is peel back. Hang on. I'm going to reform my butter into a square. I'm going to peel back the top layer, nice and cold. We're going to put the butter in the middle of our dough, as close to the middle as you can get it. And then we're going to unpeel the top of the baking paper. Ta-da! A good tip. Peel the paper off the butter, not the other way around. Peel the paper off the butter. Perfect. I'm going to dispose of this because it's very greasy. All buttery. Okay, now we've got our butter in the middle of our dough. I'll try and move it down so you can see exactly what's going on here. 
Now what I want you to do is fold over, oh, sticking to the surface a bit, fold your dough over the butter, like so. Now it should come about to the middle, fold the other layer over, don't worry if it crosses over a little bit, and then we're going to press down on the edges as well. Press down on the edges, there we go, looking good. I've got quite an excess either side of my butter, but I'm going to fold one up this way, and I'm going to fold one down the other way, as soon as I've peeled it off, peeled it off the counter. Flip it over, fold that over, right. So all of our butter is now completely encased in dough. Now that is the important bit. Now don't handle it too much because your hands are warm and the more you handle it, the more it's going to warm up. We don't want that. Heat is our enemy. Now, we're going to flour our dough. We're going to flour our rolling pin. And we're going to roll it out. Now we want to roll it long ways. We want a nice long sheet. So let's roll it, I'm going to flip it over just to stop it from sticking to the counter. Flip it over, I'm going to flour this side as well. Flour, flour, flour everywhere. There we go. Rolls much easier when it's been floured. So bear that in mind. Roll it nice and long. And now we are going to fold this into three. So you want to imagine your length of dough. Oh, that's a bit of a puffy end over here. Your length of dough is cut into thirds and we're going to fold it across a third and then this side back across again, just like that. That is one turn. So we now have three layers of butter in between our dough. Now we're going to wrap this in cling film and we're going to chill it for half an hour. Make sure you completely encase your dough in cling film because you don't want it to dry out while it's in the fridge. Nice piece of cling film. Turn over my dough and wrap it up. There we go. Make sure that it's all well wrapped, all your edges are covered and there's no air in there. And this is going to stay in the fridge for 30 minutes. There we go. Wrap it up again if you want to, if you're unsure, but pop that in the fridge, lying flat for 30 minutes. Oops. I'm going to do one more with you so that you know what you're doing, so that will be coming up right now. But remember, you want 30 minutes of chilling in between each fold. So the next one will be coming straight up, but I'm going to wait for the alarm to fold again. So see you in 30 minutes. Hi everyone, we are back again for our second turn. Now as I said, you should have made a mark somewhere to keep track of your turns. I've crossed one out because we've done one. Now let's do another one. This is how you turn your laminated dough. Let's whip it out of the fridge. Ooh. Oh gosh. Let's try and make sure it's smaller this time. Now the chilling in the fridge is very important. You cannot miss that step. So keep chilling because your dough is going to keep rising and you need to slow that process down. Right, flour is also very important. Flour your dough. Flip it out onto the surface. Bonk. Keep hold of your cling film. Don't want to be wasting too much plastic. Okay, now we're going to roll it lengthways. Making indents like this into your dough is going to help you to roll it out evenly. And what you want to do is flip it as you roll it. This is going to stop it from sticking to your surface and make sure that it's rolled evenly. So roll it out quite long like this. Then we're going to fold it. 
So you fold the middle at one end in about a third of the way. Get rid of any excess flour on the surface and roll the other end up like that. Now, every time you roll it out and fold it, I change the direction. Now what that means is we've rolled it this way and folded it like this. Now when I take it back out, I'm going to turn it so that my folded edges are either side and I'm going to roll it that way and fold it that way. Just gives it a more even balance to your folds. There we go. Wrap it back up in the cling film. I might put an extra layer of cling film on this time just to make sure that it's wrapped up well. Don't want any air getting in there. There we go. Nice and tight, and then back it goes for another half an hour. There we go, where's my alarm? Another 30 minutes on the clock, and I've crossed off. That was my second, oh there's an ant. Where did you come from little guy? turn it's going back in for 30 minutes start my alarm back it goes now I'm not going to do another turn on camera so just keep repeating this video so you know how your turns going and cross off until all four, four turns have been completed that's it and then I will see you oh I need to remind you so we're going to fold and turn four times that was number two you need to do two more so you're going to watch this video i'll just do videos i'll do all turn videos so see you in 30 minutes basically um yeah why not but if you don't want to watch every single video then keep in mind you can just disregard the video and keep turning chilling for 30 minutes roll it out turn it repeat as long as you've done four turns all together you can then wrap your laminated dough up really well and leave it in the fridge overnight so i'll be finished with my turning it's probably about six o'clock something like that leave it to chill overnight in the fridge and then in the morning take it out and shape it and i'll put another video up for the shaping part but i'll see you in a bit for another turn bye hey everyone my dough and our dough your dough as well has had 30 more minutes so let's do another turn. Even though my dough is in the fridge, it's feeling a little bit warm, so I'm going to put mine in the freezer for its last 30 minutes of chilling time. Again, same process. Try not to handle your dough too much. Your hands will be warm. And try and do these steps as quickly as possible. Don't spend too much time mithering about how well it's rolled out and that kind of thing. Just get it rolled out, get it folded, then get it wrapped up and back in the fridge. Flouring the dough again. Now remember what I said to you before, the edges of my fold are here facing me. So you can see there, that's the bits that's folded. That's the way I'm going to roll it and that's the way I'm going to fold it this time. So it's different to the last time. Just gives us a bit more balance with our butter layer. Okay, rolling out the dough. We don't want to take too much time with this. Whoops, so we want to get it back into the fridge. There we go. Just make sure it's rolled as evenly as you can get it. That's the main thing. This end's a bit thicker, slide it down, roll this end a little bit more, there we go, great, 
over into the third. We'll square off that edge a little bit. And then across again. Even that up. Okay, good. Wrap it up. And this is going in the freezer for an hour, up for half an hour. It needs one more turn and then it's going in the fridge overnight. So let's get it wrapped back up as well as humanly possible without handling it too much. It's quite heavy and like squidgy. Wrapping it up nice and tight, setting my alarm for 30 minutes. Dun, 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 dun. Cross off my third turn, popping it in the freezer. needs one more turn after this. Hi everyone, it's our fourth and final turn. Let's get that dough out of the freezer. Oh gosh. Well, that's done the trick. It's definitely colder than before and I'm definitely going to need new cling film. Right. Once again, exactly the same as before. Flour. Turn it out. And remember, like before, our folded edges are going to be either side, and I'm going to roll it long ways and fold it long ways. Okay. Perfect. It's a bit colder than usual, so we need to kind of work the dough a little bit more to get it rolled out that is absolutely fine It'll still work just as well and we are going to have some wonderful layers now the science behind this if you ever want to know about lamination you've probably heard it if you watch bake off the butter is lying in layers between our dough once it heats up in the oven that butter releases air, steam, and creates layers of our, in our dough as it bakes, which is how we get that lovely crispy texture. And as you, you can even see now, I can see like the, the, the butter that has been rolled in between the dough, That's exactly what you want. So this is our final turn. Square up a little bit. Remove the flour, oh. fold, perfect, that is done, that basically oh, is our croissant dough ready to go, but now we want to leave it to chill and rest overnight for at least 12 hours, and then we're going to shape it and bake it in the morning. So let's get a good bit whoops, of cling film because I really want to wrap this up well. I do not want any air getting in this overnight. Try not to crush the dough as we wrap it up. I'm going to do another layer just to be sure. Flip it over so that I can cover the edges. There we go. Now this can go in the fridge. It doesn't need to go in the freezer now. In fact, I wouldn't put it in the freezer. Well, you can freeze it if you want to, but if you do freeze it, you're going to have to defrost it for like a good 12 hours before you do the next shaping stage. So if you want to freeze it, freeze it now, take it out the night before, let it defrost overnight, and then follow the steps in the morning. However, I am just going to chill mine in the fridge overnight. It's heavy. Ooh, there we go. Make sure it's all covered, no air's getting in there. 
and I'm going to leave it overnight. I'll see you all in the morning when we're going to shape and bake our croissants. Now, one important thing is it will need, in the morning when we take it out, we're going to shape it into our croissant straight away. Then we're going to leave it in its croissant shape to prove for a couple of hours because it needs to warm up from being in the fridge in order to prove. So if you're hoping to have croissant for breakfast, make sure you leave yourself a good hour and a half. Whip out your dough early as you like in the morning, shape it, then cover it up and leave it for an hour before you're ready to bake. I'm going to be having mine for breakfast tomorrow. Uh, so I'm going to get up and get it out and shape it at about eight o'clock. That way by about nine, half nine-ish, I can have lovely croissant for breakfast. So just bear that in mind. Right then, see you tomorrow.